Trinidad and Tobago is blessed with natural gas resources, and our current usage has been explored in this Rethinking Energy video series. But can we ever achieve economic prosperity if we maintain the status quo? A lack of change and innovation in the energy sector can contribute to economic crisis, as seen in other countries globally. It has therefore now become imperative that we embark on innovative restructuring, policy updates, and sustainable projects. We got to understand in videos 1 and 2 that natural gas is a precious resource, and various end uses bring different benefits to our country. There is a broad spectrum of solutions to harness maximum value from our natural gas. We can help to optimize usage by improving our energy efficiency where we live and work. But there are major changes which can also be implemented at the governmental level and national scale, which we will explore in this video. Energy efficiency means getting the same or better output using less energy. Under the Sustainable Energy Roadmap 2021-2030, to prepared by the Ministry of Energy and Energy Industries and the European Union, this is a key recommendation for improving our national energy sector. The benefits are significant. Let's take a look at what some of them can be. The majority of the streetlights lining our nation's roadways emit a yellow hue, indicating that these are power-hungry high-pressure sodium bulbs. LED light bulbs are far more efficient, and by replacing our existing streetlights with these, the natural gas that would otherwise be used to generate electricity for inefficient lighting can instead help to create valuable revenue streams, such as through downstream products previously discussed. There are also significant energy efficiency opportunities where electricity is generated, which is known as supply-side efficiency. Power purchase agreements which are the contracts that exist between our independent power producers and TN Tech, ensure that IPPs get paid based on the amount of electricity they have the capacity to produce, rather than the amount of electricity they actually produce. These are called take-or-pay agreements. And unfortunately, they give the power producers no incentive to invest in more efficient power plants, even if they would like to since their compensation is not at all related to the natural gas input or electricity output on a day-to-day -day basis. The TGU and PowerGen Penal plants use combined cycle turbines, which combine a natural gas-powered combustion turbine with a steam turbine to generate more electricity from the same unit of gas. In contrast, PowerGen's Point Lisas turbines operate with older, open-cycle technology, these were installed between the 70s and 80s and use more than twice the amount of natural gas for the same unit of electricity output, operating at about 35% efficiency at best, while all additional energy is wasted, dissipating as lost heat. Combined cycle technologies in the meantime can achieve as much as 60% efficiency. Where we are now facing a natural gas shortage, are these losses at the power stations acceptable? Analysis by PowerGen engineers has shown that recommended upgrades to some of their turbines from open cycle to combined cycle could cost about 80 million US dollars, but could save us 45 million US per year in natural gas. This represents a payback period of less than two years. Government buildings are prime candidates for energy efficiency. Energy saving companies, also known as ESCOs, can install energy-saving devices through a financing model at zero cost to the government to regulate air condition temperatures and turn off lights when not in use. The electricity costs which government would then save almost effortlessly can be used to pay back the ESCOs for their services and investment in equipment. All future energy and financial savings afterwards then become a direct benefit to tax-paying citizens. Isn't this a win-win situation? Recall as well that natural gas can be used as a valuable feedstock for creating higher value products. An in-depth government-funded study demonstrated that by incorporating various inputs, there is potential to develop a solar energy park to manufacture PV solar panels, providing opportunity for an interesting new industry 
and diversification in our energy sector. This could even allow us to become the primary solar panel suppliers to our Caribbean neighbors, who are currently seeking to grow their renewable energy power generation capacities. TNT also has the target of 10% renewable energy by 2021. To make the smartest decisions for our power sector, a holistic approach known as an integrated resource plan is needed to strategically plan TNT's electricity network investments. This is a crucial process, which many other Caribbean islands have already embraced and undergone, and is a study which assesses the best mix of different electricity supply technologies and the optimal locations across the nation's grid to minimize transmission wastage, ensure grid stability, and avoid blackouts. The Sustainable Energy Roadmap also demonstrates the feasibility and financial benefits of introducing utility-scale and small-scale renewable energy. This can include solutions for public buildings and the introduction of renewable energy microgrids, which can provide energy to rural areas and critical infrastructure such as clinics, hurricane shelters and water pumps. This is especially valuable for building greater energy independence and climate resilience as extreme weather events can knock out traditional above-ground electricity lines and poles, leaving vulnerable communities and important services without power for extended periods of time. Trinidad and Tobago is a recognized energy leader globally due to extensive experience developing our fossil fuel resources over the last 100 years. Given this, shouldn't we make every effort to maintain our position and become true energy leaders in a world that is moving towards a more sustainable future? We have the potential to transform and become role models for energy efficiency, as well as experts in and suppliers of renewable energy technologies, while utilizing our remaining natural gas supplies in the most optimal way, today and for generations to come. But the question is, do we have the will and vision to achieve this?